A PM Research model steam engine part one. This small steam engine was sent to me by a customer in the USA. The engine was built from a pre-machined kit and I want to take it apart to show how it is made. I intend to paint the engine, then rebuild it. This is the engine as I received it from the USA and it's actually screwed together but not very tightly. Which is a good thing because it will make it far easier to dismantle. Altogether it looks like a very well made engine. The only thing I hate about it are these hideous slot headed screws that hold it together. I'm going to replace those with hexagon ones. If you don't look closely at the bolts, the engine is quite a nice looking thing. Before taking it apart I think I'll run it, just to see what it's like. Well it runs ok and there's actually plenty of power for such a small engine. I'll try it in slow motion. There's only one thing that's bothering me and it's the concentricity of the hub of the flywheel. Not the outer part of the flywheel or the inside of the outer part that's ok. I have noticed that quite a few engineers will turn a flywheel and bore the centre but leave the centre boss alone. I don't like the way it looks so I am going to machine it but not in this episode. All I need to dismantle this engine is a screwdriver and a suitable allen key. This allen key has some red paint on it, it's just to identify that I don't have many of this size so I can find it quickly. So don't lose the parts I'm putting them all in a red plastic box, starting with the flywheel. Looking at the flywheel in the box I noticed that the spokes could do with a bit of fettling. This term fettling means to remove excess metal from a casting to make it look better. The main cast iron engine base will also need some fettling. I need to remove the crankshaft to have a look at it. In this clip I'm removing the slot headed bolt that holds the connecting rod to the crank web. I quite like the design of the separate sleeve. As the connecting rod wears you can just make a slightly larger sleeve to compensate for this. A single grub screw holds the eccentric sheave to the crankshaft and once I slacken this off the crankshaft should slide out and indeed it does. With the crankshaft removed you can see that this is the crank web. Like the eccentric sheave the crank web is held to the crankshaft with a grub screw. This is a nice touch, a flat has been machined on the crankshaft to locate the grub screw. Unfortunately the builder missed this entirely, but when I put it back together I'm going to make sure that the grub screw is exactly in the centre of the flat. I'm temporarily refitting the crank web but it's going to come off for polishing. With the crankshaft removed I can now lift the eccentric out of the way. I quite like the machined in oil boxes that are not just round, they're elongated. So they will hold a little bit more oil. The machining on the engine is obviously very good, all CNC control stuff I would think. After initially using two spanners to slacken the lock nut, I'm unscrewing the eccentric rod from the valve. The valve fitted to this engine is a piston valve. Piston valves are used in many many steam engines, particularly large steam locomotives. This is a very small piston valve with a hole in the side, which is quite a nice touch really. Not all piston valves are like this. The hole in the side allows the steam to go down the centre of the valve and exhaust out of the end of the valve chest. In my hand I have two valves. One is the piston valve I've just shown and the other is a Stuart slide valve and you can see how very different they are. A slide valve works in a very different way. The pressure of steam holds the slide valve onto the port and it moves back and forth. A piston valve moves back and forth but there's no steam pressure on it so it's a lot easier to move, therefore the valve gear doesn't need to be quite so strong and doesn't wear out quite as quickly. The well known saying that a slide valve wears in and a piston valve wears out is correct. But what it doesn't mention is, as the slide valve is wearing in, the valve gear pins are wearing out. Because the pressure of steam on the top surface of the slide valve makes it a lot more difficult to move. A piston valve will wear out, particularly in a small model, so you just make another one slightly bigger. 
What are these two groove screws for, I hear you ask? They are just used to blank off the two holes that were needed when the part was made, to allow two drillings to be made on the inside of the piston valve chest. I'll show you this closer in another episode. The groove screws are only blanking plugs, and I think it would be much better if they were made of a non-ferrous material, because over time the two steel groove screws will rust, and then they could be difficult to remove if ever you needed to remove them. Here's the part I'm going to enjoy. I'm removing all of these hideous slot-headed screws, and I can't wait to see them go. I quite like PM Research stuff, but I do not like the way they use these type of screws. These two, in conjunction with a pair of spacers, set the position of the crosshead top guide, the same as on this crosshead guide. And now there are no crosshead guides, and you can see the crosshead. And in this clip you can see how well the parts are machined. Back for another comment about these bolts. I don't know what they are, they're not BA. Here I'm comparing one with a 5BA bolt and as you can see it's entirely different. The pitch is different and the diameter is different. I would think these are possibly 1 8 width with bolts. I'll find that out later and show it in another episode. I don't mind the state of the cast iron on the bed casting. There's a little bit of fettling needed around the lugs, but when I paint it black, it should give an effect of being stove enamelled. I didn't mention I was going to paint it black, but I am, because I think black against brass or gunmetal looks really good. The cylinder is held to the main bed casting by three of these slot-headed bolts, and I'm glad to see them go. The only slot-headed bolt I'm going to leave in position on this engine is the one underneath, and you need a long screwdriver to get at it. Here you can see why it's quite useful to have a bolt in this position, because I personally don't have any nut spinners or box keys that would fit a hexagon bolt in such an inaccessible place. In this clip I'm unscrewing the crosshead from the piston rod after slackening off the lock nut. And now I have to go, my family are coming round for dinner and I need to cook a meal. I quite like cooking, but for six people that's about my limit. Time to start peeling the potatoes. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.